Шандец просто горит, копил мать. Вот в этом месте стояла дверь, да. да, вот здесь. Да. Это коридорная дверь. Да. Ром, ну вот кто прибыл здесь, здесь ни одного баллона не было. Баллоны были все вот здесь. Ты как стекла повыбивала, да на, на сколько аж улетела. Ничего себе, да смотри. The 23rd arsenal of Russia's main missile and artillery directorate that was struck by Ukrainian intelligence last week, had received a large batch of anti-aircraft missiles from a base in Belarus prior to its destruction, Belarus media reported. The arsenal is located near Oktyabrsk village in Russia's Tver region and was attacked on September 21st. According to the report, The 23rd Arsenal received ammunition from the 1,562nd separate anti-aircraft repair and technical base located near the Belarusian city of Osipovichy. This was the largest batch of ammunition from Belarus delivered to this arsenal during 2024. According to the report, the missiles for the anti-aircraft missile complexes were delivered to the military depot by rail. The total volume of cargo was 94 semi-cars with missile weapons for air defense systems in containers, as well as five cars with security. The approximate time of dispatch of the groups of wagons is the late July and early August and the cargo was defined as explosive materials. The loading of one semi-wagon ranged between 20 and 30 tons. It should be noted that during the attack on the 23rd arsenal, the facility was almost completely destroyed. In addition to the warehouses themselves, the railway infrastructure located on the territory was also affected. Apart from the military depot in Tver, Ukrainian intelligence struck another arsenal near Tykoretsk in Russia's southern Krasnodar region that was one of the key arsenals in the logistics system of Russian troops. At the moment of the attack, there was an echelon delivering more than 2,000 tons of ammunition, including from the North Korea. Fire and explosion had taken place in the areas of both military arsenals following the attack. President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko has announced the country's red lines and threatened to use nuclear weapons if Belarus or Russia is attacked by NATO. Lukashenko thanked Russian leader Vladimir Putin for confirming the use of nuclear weapons in such a situation. If NATO attacks us, we will use nuclear weapons and Russia will support us, he stated. He mentioned that Americans and Poles are gathering along the border, especially with Poland. We know that the Polish leadership is already rubbing their hands in anticipation, he stated. Lukashenko stressed that the state border of Belarus is a red line. If we use nuclear weapons, we may be retaliated against, Russia in particular. Therefore, Russia will use its full arsenal and this could lead to a world war. The West doesn't want that and it isn't ready for it. But we are clear, the red line is the state border. If they cross it, our response will be immediate. We are preparing for this, he said. Besides, Belarusian companies may be linked to sanctioned Iranian arms manufacturing companies. Inform Napalm reported the information citing the activist group cyber.anarchy.squad. 
Volunteer analysts managed to obtain 700 gigabytes of data from the Belarusian Chamber of Commerce and Industry and related legal entities. An initial analysis of these materials suggests potential collaboration between Belarusian companies and Iranian enterprises that have been sanctioned specifically in connection with the production of weapons from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, according to the statement. In May, the Belarusian concern Belneftekim participated in the Iran Oil Show International Exhibition where several agreements were established between Belarusian and Iranian companies. Notably, Steklovo Lokno signed a memorandum with Iranian counterparts to supply silica materials valued at 200,000 euros. This fiber is believed to have potential military applications. Interestingly, there are no official mentions of the Iranian side represented by composite albors available online. Analysts speculate that the name may have been intentionally altered in the documents to obscure illegal activities. There is a strong possibility that Belarusian companies are actually collaborating with Albor's organic materials engineering company, which was recently sanctioned by the US. Albor's organic materials engineering company is accused of supplying strategic materials used in the production of missiles and drones for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Volunteer analysts stress that there is reason to believe the Belarusian company is supplying silica materials to this specific firm, which is part of a network of suppliers to the Iranian military industry. If our suspicions are confirmed, Belarusian petrochemical companies are providing materials to the Iranian military sector, which manufactures missiles and drones. Iran, in turn, transfers these weapons to Russia, which employs them to attack Ukraine. This information leak underscores the critical need for international monitoring and control over the supply of strategic materials, the article states.